Welcome back to Technique Quad. Today we're talking about building total body strength using suitcase deadlifts. Okay, if you don't know what a suitcase deadlift is, come over here, show you. Looks just like this. You're basically doing a deadlift where the weight is primarily on, on one side of your body. So if you have a farmer's handle as an example, I'm just doing a regular deadlift, but I'm only, I'm only lifting weight in one hand for the basic movement. You can also have weight asymmetric load on each side, which we're gonna go over as well. This would be really common if you're doing like a one-armed farmer's walk with a kettlebell. You come over here, you, you pick it up. The weight's all in one hand. You can set it down between your legs. I still count this even if it's between my legs, but traditionally it's done where, where it's on the side of you. Whew. All the same points of performance are present that you'd see in a regular deadlift. I'm here, I'm, I'm hinging at the hip. I have for the most part a very vertical shin angle. My weight's on my heels or maybe, maybe mid-foot. Shoulders are back, back is flat. And then I drive through my heels. Whew. My, my butt stays down, even though it starts above my knee, it stays down, comes forward. I finish squeezing my glutes to the top, uh, full hip extension. So all the points of performance are the same. Uh, what people tend to do wrong, if you come in front of me here, is a lot of times people will kind of, they'll kind of lean. They'll kind of lean like this and try to pick it up, okay? You wanna be there. You wanna be here. You might have to put your foot really close to the weight because it's gonna pull you this way. And all the tension, is gonna be mostly on this leg. It's kinda of like doing a, you know, it's, you're basically going like that. It's kinda of like doing a, like a skater squat or just a single leg deadlift. We have the other leg that you can use to balance, okay? So depending on how heavy it is, it's gonna really determine like how much you feel like you're all the way on one leg, okay? You can do it where it's, it's all on one hand or you can simply, you know, load one side different than the other. So I have a few more pounds on this side. On my left side, it's the same deal. You know, if, if you deadlift, you know, 500 pounds, you know, maybe you put 200 pounds on one side and 100 pounds on the other side. It's asymmetrical where you're going to have that, that loading that's heavier on one arm than the other, which means that as far as your, your torso and your core stability is concerned, you're going to be challenged more than if it was perfectly symmetrical. If it's perfectly symmetrical, then I don't have to worry about it tipping me one way or the other. So I don't have to con contract all these muscles and worry about all the hip shifting that could potentially happen if it's perfectly symmetrical. If it's misloaded, then I have to really fight to stay straight, you know, sagittal plane aligned, you know, lifting in a phone booth style. If you don't have farmer's handles, you know, farmer's handles, maybe you have a trap bar, you know, maybe you have two heavy kettlebells, or if you have a trap bar, same deal. You know, it's heavier on my right side than my left. So you can see the left side comes off really easy. And I'm doing more, more of the loading is taking place by the side that's closest to the, uh, to the heavier weight. If you don't have that, then, you know, you can, you can use, um, you can use a misloaded barbell. You can put it in a, in a sleeve if you want to, like a, like a landmine sleeve. If you're out here, you're going to be grabbing the, grabbing the sleeve, which, uh, you know, the, the diameter is larger, which means that it's going to be harder to hang on to it, but that's okay, depending on what you're working on. So you can just have that up like that. You could do it on the inside like this as well. Or if you want to make it even harder, this is actually called a, this isn't technically a suitcase deadlift, this would be a shovel deadlift. The closer I am to the weight, closer I am to the weight, the easier that's gonna be as far as my stability goes. But if I wanna come out more like this, it's much, much harder. So you can, you can, depending on how much weight you have on one end of the barbell, you can kind of adjust and calibrate how far away from that weight you wanna be. The further away you get, uh, obviously the harder it's going to be because your leverage gets poorer and poorer, where where I'm pulling up hard with this arm and I'm pushing down hard with this arm just to stay straight and not, not get crooked. Uh, that is gonna be much harder on, on my core torso area, you know, my, my obliques, and much, it's not gonna be that difficult on my legs still, I'm still only lifting, you know, uh, in this case, you know, shy of 100 pounds, 90 pounds. So it's not very heavy as far as my legs are concerned, but it's much, much harder on, on my core musculature. Um, 
Same thing with the, with the shovel deadlift that I talked about on the suitcase deadlift. I easily could put, you know, 245s on this side, only 145 on the other side, and get that, that misloaded uh, feeling. You might have to adjust where you, where you are on the bar. It, it takes a little bit of, of kind of working it and feeling it to understand what it's gonna feel like. Uh, of course, you always wanna make sure that you have really, really good technique. Uh, if you're picking up, you know, 400 pounds, you wanna make sure that you are in perfect alignment and you're not you know, slipping to the side and, and bending your back in a way that's not meant to be bent. You're looking for a back injury in that case. Uh, same thing with, you know, with your knees. As, as you pick it up off the ground, if you're not in the right spot, you might, you might find yourself shifting unexpectedly right as it comes off the floor and you could injure yourself. So, so start light, find where your footing needs to be and then build up slowly. That way, when you get to that, that heavy weight, you, you know everything is in alignment and you're not going to hurt yourself. Okay. Um, I like to do these just because I think they're a lot of fun. Uh, there's many other reasons you could do them, but if you're just sick of doing heavy deadlifts and you want to do something that's, that's kind of similar, but of course not the same thing. If you have a powerlifting competition coming up and it matters that you can pull 98% you know, of your max and 100% of your max, maybe you know, 101, 102% hitting that PR on the day of the meet, then this isn't going to be a, a mainstay focus for you. This is more off-season training, uh, or maybe you do it during a deload week. Uh, it's challenging to, to your, your core. It's not quite as challenging to, um, to your low back just because you're, you're not hanging, you know, four or five, 600 pounds um, off your shoulders like you would be if you were doing one at max deadlift. So, so it's easier as far as uh, your lumbar extension goes. You're not likely to round your back just because it's not, not as heavy usually. Um, that said, you can still, you can do it heavy. Um, if you put on you know, 200 pounds on one side and 150 pounds on the other side, that's still a 350 pound deadlift. And if you only deadlift 450 or, or maybe even 400, that's still a really heavy deadlift. And that's, that's very attainable to do. If you're, if you go back over here. You know, if you've done a lot of farmer's walks, this is essentially the, the position that you start with when doing, when doing a heavy farmer's walk. You pick it up and then, and then you start walking. And if you've done heavy one on farmer's walks, you know that they're one of the best core exercises that you can possibly do. And you can probably do that with you know, body weight, body weight and a half, you're really strong, maybe, maybe 2X body weight would be really, really, really strong. You'd have that big, big, big hands and have a really good grip. Um, other variations, just like all deadlifts, you, know, you can vary the, the height and the range of motion. So right now, you know, this is about mid shin. This, this is a pretty high, a relatively high deadlift. If, if I took this, this handle out, in fact, I'll do right now. If I took this handle out and pop it down here, you know, this changes the range of motion. Now I'm now I'm squatting down, squatting down much further to get into a good position in order, in order to pick that up. So feel free to vary the range of motion uh, to get you know, a different stimulus. The higher you pick it up from, the heavier, oof, lightheaded, the heavier the weight can be, uh, the lower the handles are, you know, the closer they are down to the bottom of your shin or your ankle, the greater the range of motion, and that's a totally different stimulus. Generally, full range of motion is a very good thing. So, uh, hope you like it. If you want to see more movements just like this one, uh, feel free to, to reach out to me on Instagram. I'm Douglas, Douglas E. Larson on Instagram. Uh, also, Shrug Collective has you know, six or seven years worth of uh, tons of videos, tons of podcasts, other videos just like this one. This is episode 130 or something like that for this show. So there's many other episodes to go see. So definitely go check that out. Also, we have the program Vault, uh, which is an online membership site where we house all of our online training programs. We have three long-term programs that go for you know beyond 18 months. You can stay on those for a year and a half, up to two years in some cases. And they have everything that you would want in an online training program. All the workouts, of course, that's the basics. And then they have nutrition advice. They have, they have habits, they have warm-ups, they have cool downs, they have mo mobility courses. There's a ton of stuff in there. It's all in one membership site. You can do one program for a little while, switch to a new program whenever you feel like the old one's you know, just not what you want anymore and you want something new in your life. It makes it very easy having it all, all on one membership site. So if you wanna check that out, that's called the program vault. You can go to shrugcollective.com backslash vault, V-A-U-L-T, that spells vault. I've gotten that wrong before. Go to vault, check it out. We'll see you another day. Welcome to the Shrugged Collective Program Vault. Over the last six years, we've been leading the charge in online strength and conditioning programming and coaching. And for the first time in the history of the Shrug Collective, we're combining our 11 best-selling long-term and short-term accessory programs into one membership site called the Program Vault. From Olympic weightlifting to strongman, leaning out, nutrition, you name it, 
our 11 best-selling programs are yours for $47 a month. Get to shruggedcollective.com backslash vault and you will find immediate access to our 11 best-selling strength and conditioning programs.